Hey folks, Alex Smith's back again with another voiceover-centered video. This time in my bathrobe because it's cold in my house, and it's also just kind of fun. So in my short time in VO land, which by short I mean a few years, I've heard something that has caused me to have a knee-jerk reaction like multiple times. Coming from stage to voiceover means you'll probably come with bad habits to unlearn. I'm paraphrasing here, but I've heard it a few times or have read it a few times enough times to make a video about it. And I'm making a video about it because that's exactly what I did. I am a stage actor that has come into the world of voiceover. After cooling off and reflecting a bit, uh, I have a better sense of how true and untrue that idea actually is. So let's dive in and talk about it. First, let's talk about the cons of moving from stage acting to voiceover. The first one that comes to mind is that it's hard to, quote, turn it on in the booth if you're coming from the stage. You know, the stage is great because you have lights beaming down on you that pretty much just drown out the rest of the world. You're in costume costume that isn't your everyday attire, probably in makeup, odds are your hair's probably different too, and you've had weeks of rehearsal to get where you are now and figure out exactly how to tap into the right emotions of that character that you've been interpreting for a long time. Yeah, none of that's with you in voiceover or in the booth. You're lucky if you get the script the same day, uh, and you'll likely get character scripts right before the session starts. I think it was Rob Paulson that said that voiceover artists or voice actors are the short order cooks of the acting world, and he's right. They have to conjure characters, tap into emotions, figure out vocal placement, and be pseudo audio engineers all in the span of like a couple of minutes. So yeah, that was definitely new for me. I had to get really good at busting out stellar performances, well, stellar for myself, in just the span of a couple of minutes. However, I think doing that has made me a better stage actor now that I've gone back to the stage for various projects. Another tough one to tackle is moving from a projected voice to a conversational voice, since conversational voice is everywhere in voiceover world. You know, being on the stage means that people need to hear you. I'm used to performing in a little black box theater that's even a three quarters in the round, like super close audience member type of theater. So I don't even have to project that far when I do stuff in that theater, but I still do have to project. You know, it's still a theater that holds a lot of people. So odds are if you're doing something intimate, it's loud and intimate. Which seems counterintuitive, but if you're a stage actor watching this, I think you know exactly what I mean. You die loudly. You grieve loudly. You silently weep loudly. You know, you do everything at a much higher volume than you would in the real world. And in the booth, you do everything pretty much exactly at real world volume, or even quieter sometimes. So yeah, that really is one habit to break. You win this round, naysayers. However, I think that stage acting is more of a benefit in the booth than it is a hindrance, so I'm gonna shift gears and talk about that now. Uh, there are a few better places to learn how to actually act than a situation where you actually have to act. Sure, there are workshops and classes and books, but learning on the stage or, you know, on the job, as they say, is, in my opinion, the best way to start. It's sort of like helping a kid learn how to ride a bike by giving him a stack of books on how to ride a bike. Until you get the kid out on the bike, probably not gonna happen. Of course, you'll suck in the beginning, because everyone does, but a real acting situation provides you with a lot of stuff you can't get off stage or even off camera. First of all, if you're coming from stage, odds are you're working with the director. And regardless of whether the director is top notch or even mediocre, you'll pr have an objective third party whose main goal is to get you to a place where you don't suck. They can give you ideas you haven't thought of. They can stretch your acting muscles in ways previously unknown to you. It's like a personal trainer, but for your ability to emote. I'd almost go as far to say that this is better than doing something like self-taping yourself and watching it back for practice. If you self-tape, you just have you. If you're doing on-camera work at an indie level, odds are your director, camera person, and sound person might all be the same person. So maybe this take is good enough and they're just worried about getting their equipment rentals back on time. I'm mostly kidding, but not entirely. But really though, the main thing that I love about stage is that it helps you to learn how to take direction. And this is by far the best reason to get to any stage at any of your local community theaters if you can. As I'm making this video, we're in the midst of the Omicron variant, which, uh, you know, I'm not telling you to go rush to a stage right now, but I, I can't tell you how to live your life. But going back to translating, I would argue that the most important thing in voiceover is the ability to take direction. A lot of us are really bad self-directors. I know I certainly am. And when I find what I think a character is supposed to be, I have a hard time coming up with multiple takes because I inadvertently dig my heels in the dirt on those decisions. When I send off A and B takes, it isn't really an A and a B. It's more like A and A with sprinkles. I'm working on it though. But working with the director and actually doing what they ask without fighting them on it will get you called back for more jobs. I have seen actors pseudo fight directors on decisions that the director makes, and it is super cringeworthy. So much so that regardless of how good that actor is, they don't get called back. Remember that whatever you're working on isn't your project, it's theirs. And if they want you to change something or do something a certain way, 
do it. And when you do it right the second time, it gives the director a shot of dopamine that's placed right next to your name in their memory banks. So do it well the first time, and then do it their way the second time. And if you don't know how to do that yet, getting to a stage is a great place to learn. However, if the stage isn't an option, once again, going back to that uh, coronavirus variant, be careful. Here are some alternatives that you can explore. Find a local improv troupe. And going back to the coronavirus thing, this is still kind of a stagey thing, but if you can get to a stage and if your stage is safe or if you want to get together in a garage or something um, and you have no other means of doing plays or musicals, improv is a great way to go. And improv helps you with voiceover immensely. Another option is to take online workshops. Mid-pandemic, they popped up all over the place. And they're still going strong as of the recording of this video. One-on-one -on -one coaching is also fantastic. And it will always be the best bang for your buck. I say that and you might be thinking to yourself, but one-on-one -on -one coaching's really expensive. Uh, yeah, it's expensive hourly, but the value, nine times out of 10, far exceeds the price or the cost. Remember, value and cost, not the same thing. And lastly, and this is a weird one, I found that a lot of my skills of emotional adaptation came from service jobs like waiting tables and tending bar, which I did for a long time. Tending bar literally put me through college. But seriously, go talk to any bartender. Bartending isn't about mixing drinks. It just so happens that mixing drinks is what you do in the middle of doing your customer service job as a bartender. The more people you talk to, and the more actively you pay attention while talking to those people, the better actor you will become as a student of life, essentially. All that being said, I will always recommend getting on stage for the following reasons. Aside from the memories that I've made with my partner and with my family, I've made the best memories of my life on stage and in theaters. The sense of community and camaraderie is second to none. I've made the best friends of my life there. And a bonus tip I learned in the theater is, it's never too late to make old friends. And the theater teaches you also to give your absolute most in a performance. And you can bet this concept applies to voiceover. Being on stage lets you go wild. And a director would much rather pull you back from 11 to 10 on the dial rather than try to get you to 10 from like, a five. The same is true for voiceover. And lastly, being on stage lets you go through a character's whole journey. It allows you to get into the mind of the character and take them across their whole arc, and that's a beautiful thing. In a lot of film work, you sort of film scenes out of order and you don't really have a cohesive sense of start to finish. On the stage, it's always start to finish, and that is a really really rewarding feeling. So does coming from the stage give you bad habits when hopping into the booth? Maybe, but remember that some of your favorite voice actors were stage actors first. I think Kevin Conroy comes to mind. In my humble opinion, those quote unquote bad habits don't really matter, and they can easily be unlearned with the help of a coach or a workout group or with a lot, a lot of practice. And the real benefit of the stage that you should be focusing on is that you learned how to act somewhere before stepping up to the mic to try and make a few dollars or land those cool roles. Remember, it's voice acting, not voice reading. So your number one priority should always be the acting, regardless of how or where you learn to do that.